another one if you were new to the channel. I am Gold Pony. I do car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2020 Subaru Crosstrek courtesy of Apple Subaru in York, PA. And so I'm in this one today, firstly, because Consumer Reports did give it a well above average reliability rating, which by the way, is the very highest reliability rating given by Consumer Reports. So that's certainly a good start. And on top of that, there are plenty of changes for the 2020 Crosstrek. So what do you say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as expected, there are several different trim levels for the 2020 Crosstrek. First one being the base, starting at $22,145, which by the way is a $250 increase over the 2019 model year. A modest increase really when compared to other manufacturers out there. Premium trim level starting at $23,195. Limited, which is the one we have today, starting at $27,395. And lastly, the hybrid starting at $35,145. $5, which by the way is a $150 increase over the 2019 model year. And so when it comes to the power plants, first one I want to mention is the non-hybrid power plant, aka the one we have today, being a two liter direct injected four cylinder boxer engine, putting out 152 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 145 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM. Power of course sent to all four wheels through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all wheel drive system. And that power being sent to the ground through your choice of either a six speed manual, which comes standard on the base and premium trim levels or a linear tronic cvt which is going to come standard for the limited and optional for the premium and by the way if you went that cvt route you will get paddle shifters coming standard with that as well we do happen to have that transmission set up today so you guys know we will be testing out the paddle shifters in a little bit here but nonetheless mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 29 highway for the manual 27 city 33 highway for the cvt quite a substantial difference there and there is an auto start stop system coming standard with the CVT this year. That is one of the new changes for the 2020 Crosstrek. Meaning when you come to a stop at a red light or a stop sign, the engine will turn off automatically, helping you save a little bit more MPGs there as well. And either way, taking regular unleaded fuel, aka 87 octane. But so then you have the other engine setup belonging to the hybrid configuration, being a two liter direct injected four cylinder boxer engine once again, but with two electric motors on top of that. Essentially one motor powering the starter and the other motor powering the Crosstrek in hybrid and electric driving mode. So with that particular configuration, power numbers come in at 137 horsepower at 5,600 RPM, 134 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM, and you can get up to 90 miles per gallon. That's pretty ridiculous, you guys. But before we do any kind of accelerations here, let me now touch on the driving modes for the Crosstrek. And so Subaru calls this S I drive. Essentially, those driving modes are located on the steering wheel, the right side of the steering wheel to be exact. And they were going to include intelligent and sport. And essentially what those two driving modes are going to do is adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. And so having said that, let's go ahead and push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. That is going to give me full control over the shifting. And now let's do a quick little paddle shifter test and let's see how quickly they react for us here. Here we go. Huh. All right, well, having said that, this is paired up to a linear Tronic CVT, so they are kind of simulated shifts, but still, paddle shifters were pretty quick, I gotta admit. So it is kind of nice having those paddle shifters. I will say, during that acceleration with the paddle shifters, it was, it was kind of slow, but still, the paddle shifters were very, very quick, so very impressed there, I gotta say. All right, you guys, but now having done that, what do you say? Let's do a quick little acceleration, giving the control back to the cross track end. Let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Subaru Crosstrek here up to speed with a slight incline here. We are gonna be going up a little bit of a hill, but come to a complete stop and Sportman, by the way, here we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, let me, let me touch on this acceleration. This is quite interesting, actually. So at that initial punch, was very nice. So I will say around city driving, this thing should do just fine. That initial get up and go right off the line was actually quite nice. But once you get up to 20 miles per hour, I would say 
it kind of does fall off a little bit. It is gonna definitely be on the slower side of things. If you wanted something quicker, go with the WRX, but still, acceleration-wise, and maybe this is why it's such a reliable vehicle, it's not the quickest thing in the world, I will say that. It's so but anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important, and so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.8 inch solid rear discs, and by the way, if you went with the hybrid configuration, you will find 11.2 inch solid rear discs. Little bigger brake setup if you were to go with the hybrid configuration at least. And as far as the braking feel goes, honestly, it's been perfectly fine in my test drive today, so definitely no issues there. Sometimes you run into brake pedal delay, things like that, but definitely no issues there with the cross truck at least. Touching on suspension and handling, four wheel independent raised suspension will come standard on this one. That's kind of cool. Up front, you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension with the stabilizer bar. In the back, double wishbone type rear suspension, once again with the stabilizer bar. As far as the ride quality goes, it's pretty much as expected. It's definitely not bad. Not the most luxurious ride I've ever come across, but this isn't a luxury car, so it's pretty much as expected. So ride quality is right on here. Touching on steering feel, it's actually kind of nice. It's pretty much as expected once again not the heaviest not the loosest so right in the middle of the pack there cabin noise is definitely just fine as well you do get a little bit of engine noise when you really hit the gas but other than that cabin noise is just fine it is windy as stink today so really exterior wind noise coming into the cabin is definitely subdued so no issues with any of that just a little bit of engine noise when you really hit the gas then touching on visibility i can see perfectly fine out the back really one of the best visibilities I've driven lately. So definitely perfect visibility in the cross track. No issues there. Windshield wiper to icer actually comes standard on the premium trim level and up. That's going to assist with visibility ever so slightly as well. And so, but you guys, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this bright red 2020 Subaru Crosstrek. All right, you guys, here she is, the 2020 Crosstrek. Let me first start actually with some new colors for 2020. Magnetite gray metallic is going to be replacing dark gray metallic and the color you are looking at right now is actually called pure red and that is going to be replacing Venetian red pearl. So if you like this pure red color, this is a specific 2020 color. So that is pretty cool that we have it here today. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and start up front. 8.7 inches of ground clearance. Like I was mentioning earlier to you guys, this is an independent raised suspension. And so you do have a little extra ground clearance, especially when you compare it to other manufacturers in the same class. So 8.7 inches is definitely on the higher side. So if you live on some back roads, this might be the one for you. Multi-reflector halogen headlights coming with the base and premium trim levels. LED responsive headlights coming with the limited and hybrid. Cool thing about them is LED steering responsive headlights will swivel based on your steering angle. So when you're going around bends at night, those headlights will swivel better help illuminating what is around the bend. So you're less likely to hit a deer or a squirrel or a possum or whatever so that is definitely a huge plus as well halogen fog lights coming with the premium trim and you will find led fog lights with the limited and the hybrid trims but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one raised roof rails coming standard on all trim levels as well as rear privacy glass once again standard on all trim levels power adjustable black side mirrors will come with the base trim level of the cross track however if you were to go with the premium you will find body colored side mirrors and those side mirrors are then heated as well and you will find integrated turn signals if you were to go with the limited or the hybrid trim levels but then taking a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch alloy wheels with the base and premium and 18 inch alloy wheels for the limited and the hybrid aka what you are currently looking at right now and so we're now making our way to the back of the cross track shark fin antenna up top there you guys can see that just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper and so when it comes to the exhaust of the cross track it is not integrated into the rear bumper or anything like like that it is just kind of tucked away underneath pointed towards the ground but you guys know we still have to do it so as always here is that exhaust clip you guys so now since we are around back of the cross track when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there is a button on the key fob if you like simply press that and of course there is a button on the actual lift gate itself as well so either way that is going to be how you're going to go ahead and open up the rear lift gate back there 
Once opened up, cargo capacity is actually going to differ between the non-hybrid and the hybrid setup. For instance, the base premium and limited trims are going to give you 20.8 cubic feet. However, with the hybrid configuration, that is reduced to 15.9 cubic feet. So about a quarter less of the space as you would normally get in the non-hybrid configuration. So I did want to mention that. Either way, though, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space if you needed it. Actually bumping that cubic feetness up to 55.3 cubic feet yes i knew that wasn't a word but still in the back if you were curious if there was in floor storage there is not but there is a spare tire back there which is kind of cool also there's some rear cargo tie down hooks there's also rear cargo lighting back there as well but then make your way to the rear leg room that is going to come in at 36.5 inches for the non-hybrid 36.7 inches for the hybrid a little bit different there not really anything noticeable though for reference i'm in even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there you can find a rear center armrest with cup holders if you go with the limited or hybrid trim levels and once again you will find dual usb charging ports if you go with the limited or the hybrid trim levels back there but so then make your way to the front seats cloth finish Finishes are going to come with the base and premium trims. Leather finish, like you're looking at right now, is going to come with the limited or hybrid trim levels. Those front seats will be manually adjustable for the base and premium. Power driver seat with the limited and hybrid. And heated front seats for the premium trim level and up. And those heated front seat buttons are located directly behind the shifter there. And they definitely work quite well on this super cold day here in Pennsylvania. But Taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the premium trim level and up. I gotta say, I am a fan of the orange stitching. This black and orange theme is definitely quite nice. Go O's. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have all of your buttons located on one side of the key. Lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch. And by the way, the unlock button is the Subaru logo in the middle of the key. But to go ahead and start this one, there actually is a push button start if you were to go with the limited or the hybrid, the base and premium are gonna give you that traditional turnkey ignition. But since we don't have either of those today, all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, the gauges will do a full sweep. Tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a digital display front and center, giving you basic information, essentially like trip A, trip B, what driving mode you're in, as I was mentioning earlier. Also your digital speed readout. That is pretty cool to see that up there as well. But overall, it's just a pretty basic gauge setup there. Touching on overall interior quality, a power moonroof is gonna be optional for the premium trim level and up. That goes for $1,000 if you wanted to go that route. Automatic door locks are now standard for the 2020 Crosstrek. And another new feature for the 2020 Crosstrek, automatic climate control. Once once again, now standard across the board. So a couple new features there as well. And overall, I gotta be honest, for the price point of the Crosstrek, it's actually finished quite nicely. There's home link controls for up to three different garage doors found just underneath of that rear view mirror. There's a carbon fiber look accent surrounding the interior door handle although it's not authentic carbon fiber but it does look good i'll give it that there is a couple usb charging ports auxiliary port and 12 volt power outlet just in front of the shifter there is your x mode button which i forgot to mention earlier there the that X mode button found just behind the shifter there, that is gonna be something that you wanna use for bad terrain essentially. If you're going on a back road or if you're driving in snow or anything like that, that is gonna optimize traction in any kind of crappy conditions essentially. So I always love that Subaru does X mode. Not that their all wheel drive system isn't the very best out there anyways, but X mode is just kind of icing on the cake essentially. It's just one step better. So that's definitely a plus as well. Just behind that, you have dual cup holders and of course your center armrest which you can open up and there's a decent amount of storage in there and an additional two usb charging ports as well and a 12 volt power outlet but that right there is four usb charging ports just in the front alone that's pretty darn sweet but so anyways now let's get to the tech display and there's a couple different tech displays i actually wanted to mention there's an upper and lower tech display and so the smaller upper tech display can be controlled by using the info button found on the left side of the steering wheel in case you were curious because you wouldn't think a button called info would control that necessarily but still it gives you a ton of information up there there's safety features outside temperature climate control information time of the day you have your altitude levels that's pretty cool there's your oil temp average miles per hour weather information there's a compass radio information the list goes on how many miles you have left until you hit empty but yeah, there's quite a bit you could check out up there, again, using the info button on the left side of the steering wheel. But then 
You have the larger tech display being either a 6.5 inch color touchscreen display coming with the base and the premium, or the 8 inch color touchscreen display being the one we have today coming with the limited and the hybrid trim levels. But either way, you really get the same stuff, just a different size display screen, that's all. So either way, you get Bluetooth and audio streaming. Either way, you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's always a big one because that allows you to hook up your smartphone to the Crosstrek and have free navigation up on either display screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs up there too. So that is probably a big one for me. If you wanted factory navigation system, although you really don't need it if you have a smartphone, you can get it by adding $2,395, and that is gonna include a moonroof and a Harman Kardon sound system as well. It's gonna be a package deal there. Of course, you can check out your radio settings up on that screen. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will get four speakers with a bass trim. All other trims, however, will give you a six speaker sound system. But there is an optional Harman Kardon eight speaker sound system, which is optional only for the limited and hybrid trims. We do actually have that sound system today. So that one is gonna give you 432 watts. And that means we have to turn on Sirius XM, see what we got playing today and Let's test out the clarity of this one. Did I mention the Crosstrek comes with massaging seats? That bass was ridiculous. Definitely an insane amount of bass with the Harman Kardon sound system at least. Ton of clarity. They did very well with that one. Well done Subaru. Or well done Harman Kardon I guess I should say. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display at least is when you do put the Crosstrek in reverse you will of course find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety. It's so the first thing when it comes to safety and most importantly the Crosstrek is an IIHS top safety pick plus which is the very highest designation, of course, given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. New safety feature for the 2020 Crosstrek though, rear seat reminder system now standard for all trims. Front side, side curtain airbags, also a driver's knee airbag up front. In the back, you're gonna get latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, also rear child door locks back there. Yet another new change though for the 2020 Crosstrek. I feel like there's tons of them this year. Subaru EyeSight now standard on all CVT models at least. And that is going to include adaptive cruise control, pre-collision braking system, lane departure and sway warning and lane keep assist. But also standard with the CVT at least is going to be high beam assist, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert and reverse automatic braking. And then if you want with the premium trim leveling up, that is gonna give you an automatic collision emergency assist system. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.